Based on those needs, how are companies actually using vCloud Director? Well, there are two basic categories, which I will call enterprise and SMB. A public cloud provider could possibly fit into a third category, but it would have the same general concepts as the enterprise use case. For the enterprise, deploying vCloud Director is the best strategy. Additionally, enterprises are building hybrid clouds by electing public vCloud providers for additional capacity and pay-as-you-go infrastructure. This gives the IT department really ultimate flexibility in capacity, in uptime, and in performance. IT can assign vCloud organizations or even virtual data centers to each business unit, giving them the tools they need to be both agile and efficient. For instance, finance could have their own virtual data center for their accounting packages. Development teams can have a virtual data center for development, test, and stage. Product teams can have an organization for their production web applications. Each vCloud organization has its own security policies, virtual data centers, and applications, making it best for a mixed environment. Speaking of development, Lab Manager users have also been switching over to vCloud Director for their application and development life cycles. Catalogs, vApp templates, fast provisioning, all these features really make vCloud Director a suitable alternative instead of running a completely separate deployment of Lab Manager. Small to medium-sized businesses are a little different. They don't necessarily have business units or development teams or big accounting packages. vSphere may suit their needs just fine. Deploying vCloud Director may also be way too much overhead for an IT staff in an SMB scenario where they may already be pushed to their limits. Small to medium-sized businesses can still benefit from vCloud Director by consuming a public vCloud by creating a hybrid cloud between their vSphere environment and their public cloud provider, they can gain that pay-as-you-go capacity they need instead of making knee-jerk decisions to expand their current data center. In the same way, startup companies have actually been going straight to the public cloud uh, without deploying any internal infrastructure, which saves them that initial capital investment in IT. By doing that, they can wait until they know exactly what they need before buying their internal infrastructure. Once they know, they can migrate their workloads to their own infrastructure and even keep the public provider as additional capacity for new or unknown workloads. Let's look at some real companies that are using vCloud Director. My first case study happens to be EMC. Yes. I know it seems set up, right? But get this, EMC's own internal IT department had the same challenges we talked about earlier. They weren't agile enough. They had those shadow IT issues. Their sales team was running software demos from their laptops. They needed training and testing environments. And the list just keeps going on. So EMC deployed vCloud Director to their own state-of-the-art data center and started using it for their non-critical business applications. They went on to create vApp templates with those ready-to-go software stacks that their internal consumers needed. So their sales team, their education teams, all of those teams now had vCloud director organizations at their disposal to build these applications and utilize their own internal IT infrastructure. Consona's story starts in capacity management. So they were receiving requests for virtual machines at a rate somewhere between 10 and 37 per week. Rather than attempt to expand their own data centers, of which they had three, they opted for agility by adding on public cloud services from Amazon. They tried hard to make it work for their situation, but Amazon just couldn't handle their complex application needs. It was cumbersome to manage, their costs were getting out of control, 
and they had no way to migrate to and from their own internal VMware infrastructure. By partnering with a public vCloud provider, they can now better manage their capacity, they can migrate those workloads between their clouds, and they also can host software as a service for their own clients. Finally, I'm going to give you a bit of homework. There's a whole host of public cloud case studies in VMware's public cloud diaries. These stories are actually organized per vertical market. So if you're looking for a company similar to your own, you'll be able to easily navigate within there. There are stories about hybrid cloud, but also about companies like software startups running purely at a public vCloud provider. In there, you'll find stories about test and development in the public cloud, companies without a budget for additional infrastructure or maybe don't know how much they need, and also about companies who want to right-size their applications and virtual machines before bringing them back into their own private cloud. So before we go, I thought I'd give you a little peek into my own vCloud director lab. What you're seeing is exactly what a vCloud organization admin would see, or if you're um, an IT administrator running in the public cloud, this is what a public cloud provider would give you, minus the vApps, of course. But let's talk about the vApp. I'm running various scenarios for what you would see in a hybrid cloud setup. So I have my production web app running in my public cloud. I'm testing various scenarios like cloud bursting and DR. There's still a lot of hype surrounding those two concepts within cloud computing. So that's why we didn't cover them here. But again, I have a development web app here and the production web app. I'm running various network appliances. Like I'm actually running a virtual F5 load balancer in my public cloud and I'm running a checkpoint security gateway as well. So testing out IPS in the cloud and IDS and SSL VPN and, and various network type features that you can deploy. Probably the most interesting one is this VCC demo. So this is my vCloud connector demonstration environment. And if we open up this vApp, you can see that it's an entire virtual lab running right within this vApp. So for instance, I'm running an actual ESXi host as a virtual machine. In addition to that, this is the vCenter that manages it. And then I have a vCloud connector server and node. And what I'm able to do is this is essentially my private cloud. I can then test out various scenarios with vCloud connector going from my little private cloud here up to my public cloud. 